Hey, this is Nicholas Maggio, writer director of Mobland. You're watching John Ali TV. It's going to be about pills and money and custom. What's up, buddy? Finally, bro. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. So, man, you know now I love your movie. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I got to tell you again, it's a great movie, you know, a great cast, a great storytelling. Love the noir, rural, genre crime. Uh, and this is your first flick. And, um, and you're the director and the writer, the co-writer, I guess. Uh, tell me more about it. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, first feature, um, I've written a few scripts. This is the first one that's got done. Uh, I'm massive fan of the, uh, you know, neo-noir genre. So, uh, you know, everything I write is kind of in this vein. And so I knew that this was going to be, um, the type of story I was going to tell. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stoked that this is the first one I got to tell, uh yeah I'm, i'm i'm happy with it i'm happy uh i'm happy i got to do it i'm, I'm stoked to keep on going and uh, uh you know figure out what's next uh yeah always to figure out what's next uh <laughs> i saw different titles during my research and uh, sure. initially it was american metal and uh in in in, in france it is uh, uh le territoire du crime Like you can translate by the 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 crime territory. I love it. Tell right. me about this this title. Original so title. <clears throat> originally written as Blood on the Porch. That's the uh, that was the title that was on the script. That's the one uh, when it started going out to the producers. The uh, they were worried that people were going to think it was a horror film. So they said, "Hey, fucking change it." <laughs> so it turned into American Metal. Um, I came up with that. It was just a you know kind of a, a quick. Uh, working title and that became the title off through production principle um, post and then when it went to distribution they changed it to Mobland which I hate I hate the title it's you uh, hate it. I hate it it's just not uh, it's not a mob film uh, you know a lot it's of people ask me uh, you know so you know people who haven't seen it, it's like oh it's a mafia film it's about the Italian mob in Brooklyn you know because that's what the mob is and especially American vernacular so Uh, yeah, it is. It is not a mob film. So for me, you know, and I was told that, well, mob films do extremely well. I said, well, I'll, I'll write you a fucking mob film then. And you can call that one Mobland. But, you know, I lost the battle and it was called Mobland. I don't think it's the right title, but you know what? That's where we are. And that's my first feature is Mobland. So I own it. And that's, where, yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm glad that the title in France is uh, translates into something a little bit more user friendly for me, Yeah, uh, which is kind of cool. You know, territory of crime, I'll take it. But <laughs> uh, Tell me about your inspiration, you know, for the movie, because it reminds me, you know, a lot of the ambience of, you know, like, a Taylor Sheridan, you know, story sure. like, you know, um, hell of high water, you know, all mm -hmm. like a place beyond the pine. I know you love this movie. And for some poetic, you know, scenes like when Shelby is out there with his daughter in the field, it reminds me sometimes like shot, you know, like Terrence Smilek because I love mm -hmm. Terrence Smilek and sure. his poetry, you know, in shot. And, uh, so congrats on that because, This this is a low budget movie. I know it. it yeah, <laughs> it, it, it talk in about every sense. the amount of times. <laughs> uh, so you know, handle hand shot. I love it. Uh, the photography is awesome. Uh, tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some obvious and blatant gratuitous references to films I love that have inspired Mobland. Um, whether it be No Country for Old Men, um, yeah, you know, Tim it. Tim Sutton's Donny Brook. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Place Beyond the Pines, um, French Connection. I mean, there's some obvious and overt homages. Um, and I was hoping that especially, uh, 
uh, fans of the genre would understand that would 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 get those references, which I'm hoping they did. did. Sometimes, uh, you know, I've gotten some critiques, which is funny from a few critics, and I try not to read too many because I don't give a fuck, or I try yeah, not to give, give a, a fuck. fuck. I try not to. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because some of them are like, "Oh, it's a ripoff." There's there's ripoffs, and I was like, "Well, I was kind of trying to be so overt that it came off as an homage." But if they, uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely pulled inspiration from films I love. And I think that that's, um, you know, not only is that okay to do, I think that's imperative. Um, you know, I think that's what, uh, so many stories have been told so many, the way stories have been told, especially in cinema have been done. And so the newness comes from taking things that we like and that we grew up with and assembling them in, uh, you know, your head and, 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 and telling them in your own voice. And that becomes a unique voice. So I'm hoping that, the people who do understand that and who do get those references understand the homages and the, uh, you know, and the inspiration I pulled from. And I think they do because I am getting responses from complete strangers. There's like, oh, and then this from this. And I love this and the way you did this, which that's who I made the film for, you know, so I'm, awesome. I'm happy. Oh, and I love this, you know, this line, like there's pills, there's money and cussing. It is. <laughs> It's gonna be about pills and money and cussing. <laughs> the, the line, uh, you know, from John Travolta. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of blood, you know, in a car chase. This is very graphic, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a violence and a killing. What was the most challenging part? I know, I know, I already know it, but yeah. tell us. Yeah, I mean, the challenging part is the schedule, the schedule <laughs> and the budget. It's just any low budget, small budget, independent film. I think any filmmaker will tell you that's going to be the biggest problem, not problem, challenge. Challenge. Um, It was, you know, not only getting it off the ground, getting it cast, getting the money, getting the financing and actually getting the principal. But once you're there, um, oh, my God, just shooting 16 pages in a day, one day and uh, shooting the entire robbery scene in 48 minutes. And it's just we had no time and no budget. And so it was just constant problem solving and figuring out, well, how do I tell this story? How do I do it to where it still is impactful, how it can still Uh, how, how it can so resonate and serve the story, but doing it in the least amount of resources possible. So whether it was relying on the acting, relying on the dialogue, uh, relying on the scenes, uh, the landscape, uh, the themes, um, you know, that's that was the biggest challenge and uh, challenge for sure. It's just the uh, the lack of budget and time that we all face on independent filmmaking. Man, 11 days. It is um, amazing. I'm telling you, you know, with the, and what was the best, you know, moment filming or your favorite scene, you know, on screen or, you know, Oof, or behind I mean, the scene, maybe, you know? Yeah, no, I have a few favorite shots uh, throughout, um, you know, whether it be Bodhi against the red wall with his hat, uh, one of the shots that I love or, or the, the scene where uh, he's driving his demon and you, we converge on him. You know, just aesthetically, I think I really fell in love with some shots um, that Nick and Matthews did. But, uh, you know, just the whole experience, I'm, you know, is like as tough of a movie as it was and as gritty and violent. And, you know, I was still so thrilled to make it. And I'm still just this huge film nerd that, you know, when I'm on set, it's like, I couldn't help but to just absolutely fall in love and be in love with everything we were doing. Yeah. Um, I'd love to, you know, be this tough guy who, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm, I make new wars. Uh, but it's like, you know, I think maybe I'm dumb enough or I'm uh, uh, young enough in my career that it's all pretty magical still. And uh, as heartbreaking as it can be, and it already has been, um, I think it's still, uh, you know, I'm in love with the idea of making movies and I got to make a movie. So it's pretty fucking epic. It is. It is fucking epic. Yeah. And again, what a what a cast. Seems like every star's aligning in the sky this time, yeah. you know. And sometimes we have big names in movies, but we're not a lot. There just appears a short moment of uh, amount of times. And uh, and when I saw John Travolta on the poster, I, 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 I hope we'll be seeing him, you know, doing some stuff, you know. And he is there in, in the movie, you know embodied this this role this part of body and I, i just love it and what can i say about stephen dorf you know yeah dorf yeah, is man tell me about your experience with this legend and kevin yeah. dillon of course he's also i mean uh, yeah, uh, yeah yeah no I, i i absolutely lucked out um or as you said stars align just to get the cast um 
you know, Stephen Dorff got it first. He read the script. He was really, uh, he's really into it um, because he believed feeling. in it. We can feel that? it. He's really into it. You know, Stephen oh, Dorff. Yeah. yeah, he oh, was yeah, the yeah. first one. And we can feel in the movie he's into it. You know, we got yeah, he, he he told me through production pre pro post. I mean, he just loved Clayton. He loved the character. He he really it resonated with him. It's right up his alley too, um, as far as characters he likes to play. Um, but he really loved the script, and so because of that, he really championed it. Uh, got it to John Travolta. Travolta read it. Uh, you know, he gave me a call, kind of vetted me a little bit. I think uh, <laughs> you know, just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to screw this up, and uh, you know, make sure that he thought that the things. Uh, he thought were important. He wanted to make sure that I thought were important too. And, and they were. Uh, and so then once he got in, uh, you know, once he signed on, we got financing and then uh, everyone else fell into place. I wanted Shiloh Fernandez for the lead. Um, He's awesome. Yeah. He read it. He loved it. He was in. And then uh, I think uh, Kevin Dillon was actually the last one because Luke Wilson fell out uh, like, maybe 10 days before, uh, before principal. And he was Luke actually, Wilson was supposed to do the Kevin Dillon part, right? No, Luke Wilson was supposed to be the deputy. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And that dynamic was actually written differently. And okay. it was uh, same size role. Uh, it was only a few days for Luke. Uh, same size role, but this their dynamic was different. And so when he fell out, uh, Kevin Dillon read it, and he was perfect for Trey. And so we switched, and then we got Tim Murphy to step in and play Uh, ben and when he did just his look his delivery just his presence kind of demanded this 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 pivot and created this new dynamic with uh with travolta or with Bodie and with ben and it became something really special that i absolutely love i love the way both of them played the relationship and it's really fun yeah, to watch it. um something that would have been completely different uh better or worse i'm not sure with with luke wilson it just would have been a different Uh, dynamics. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And then uh, fucking Dylan is Trey was just, <laughs> he was just so perfect. And we, we pivoted a little bit to make him, you know, the New York uh, to let that really come out and let him embrace who he is. Um, and I think that was, we created something really special with that. Um, everyone knows him as Johnny drama, um, especially fans of, it seems like fans of neo-noir fans of this, genre this type of film uh you know mostly men mostly guys uh i think we've all watched entourage and we all loved it and i think because of that you have this affinity this soft spot for kevin Dillon. and so i knew that we were able to exploit that and so i wanted people you know the second you see kevin Dillon on screen i think you think johnny drama and because of that i knew i was going to get the audience on his side immediately And yeah. so I could get away with a lot more um, by making him. I mean, he's a pretty bad character. He's a, uh, you know, evil, maybe not evil, but he's got ulterior motives that serve himself um, and not Shelby. And so I think instantly people are on his side, no matter what, because he is Johnny drama. So I think we had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Congratulations again. I love, I love this movie. I just can't wait to have it on Blu-ray. I'm going to put my hands on it. You know? October 3rd. Oh, yeah, I saw it, October 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me, what is next for you, Nick? I've been writing. Um, writing, of I, course. Yeah, I got, uh, you know, I don't necessarily feel like I need to direct only my own material. Yeah. Uh, but at this point, I haven't read a script that resonates with me the same as something I've written. So until I do, I'm going to continue to read scripts and then continue to write them. Um, I have a few that are out. I've optioned a couple. Uh, I have one with one of the actors from this one who wants to do another one with me. So, uh, awesome. you know, he's, he's looking, trying to get someone, you know, to, to, to be on screen with him. So we're trying to figure that out. It's another noir. It's gritty. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's more city, it's cops, it's bad guys. It's, you know, it's, it's yeah. the same type of story that I love to tell, um, violent and pretty and poetic. Um, yeah. So we'll see about that. But man, I'm just hustling. It's, uh, you know, one thing I've learned, especially from this one now that's been out for a few weeks is, yeah. you know, the, the phone's not going to ring off the hook. You know, you got to just continue to grind and, uh, you know, having one under your belt does good things, but man, you're just, uh, it's all on your own. 
you know, you just got to keep going. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know it. Uh, and I hope Stephen Dorff will stick with you because you you made something great with the, the, you know it's been a long time i i've saw i saw him like in a role like this and i saw wow man stephen job that's why i love him and he, in your movie reminds me why i love this guy so much so thank you uh nick man we stay in touch congratulations for marblin of course i will let you know when the podcast is online from french audience yes and, uh, man, absolutely take care of your brother and, right, uh, keep doing your thing keep writing and i'm sure you're gonna do it something great Next. Man, 100%. Thank you so much for having me, bud. Of course, man. Anytime. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, dude. Bye.